Good evening, everybody. Uh, my apologies for being late. We are quite late today, but that's because we were let down very badly by networks. I'm Bhaskar, representing Free Press Journal. With me are Dr. Rastogi from Narsima, NMIMS University. And of course, our speaker for today, Ashish Khanna, who represents the sexiest part of power generation, power distribution, and the energy field, and that's solar. Uh, just to recap uh, some things that happened last week when Praveer Sina talked about the energy scenario, I thought I would begin by talking about what was said last time. One of the questions that he had responded to was which sector will grow the fastest. Most of them had agreed that solar energy would grow the fastest. And today we have the guru of solar energy talking to us. When you registered, we had asked you a question, what should India focus on? And most of you said that solar power, rooftop solar, is what India should focus on. And it so happens that Ashish Shelar, Dr. Rastogi, and I hold similar views. We are in great company together. And of course, I had added a mischievous question of how prices would decline asking a very specific number, and I thought I would catch you with the wrong answer, but you beat me to it by honestly declaring, I don't know. The truth was that between 2016 and 2000, 2010 and 2020, power prices have fallen from $3.47 to 0 0.75. And if you look at another sector, they've fallen even further, but that is something Ashish Khanna will talk about. The last part that I have to talk about is, why did NMIMS, Tata Power, and we get together? And the answer was very simple. Both NMMI, NMIMS University and Free Press Journal are in our own way involved with education. We're telling people what should be done, what is, what will be. We may be right, we may be wrong, but we try to make people understand. And since you're talking energy and solar energy, it was inevitable that you go to Tata Power, which is the largest player, and the head of Tata, so Tata Solar is Ashish Khanna, and that is where we are. But let's leave the introduction of who Ashish Khanna is. Let's go to Dr. Rastogi. Dr. Rastogi, over to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Baskar. Uh, and welcome all of you uh, on behalf of NMIMS and Free Press Journal. And it is my privilege to introduce Mr. Ashish Khanna, who is President Renewables of Tata Power. He is also MD and CEO of Tata Power Solar, which is India's largest integrated solar company. He joined Tata Power in 2007, and he has got more than 30 years of experience, uh, and which focuses on project management and contracts dealing both in India and abroad. Under his leadership, Tata Power uh, Solar emerged as number one rooftop player in the industry. He has been instrumental in streamlining the business of increased efficiency and profitability by focusing on building state-of-the-art technology, engineering, and strengthening customer and employee satisfaction. His relentless pursuit of excellence has helped Tata Solar Tata Power Solar built strong competencies leveraging technology and innovation. Tata Power Solar has more than doubled its revenue under the visionary leadership of Mr. Khanna, and during this period, the company has commissioned several challenging and industry landmark projects. Could not have better person than Mr. Khanna to talk about solar energy, and let me just tell you that he is an engineering graduate and he also holds master's degree in management and systems from IIT Delhi. Welcome, Mr. Khanna, and now I hand it over to you. Thank you. Ashish, waiting. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Rastogi, and uh, thanks to Bhaskar. He, you know, Bhaskar has really glamorized the industry I work for. Uh, <laughs> business acumen out of it. Uh, thanks, I hope the viewers uh, find justice in more from the business and the industry we are doing. Uh, 
without glamorizing it, I think let me come to the brass tacks, right? Uh, my understanding has always been that energy is politics. Rather than talking about solar per se, let's look at the larger context of where we are and why we are even in the solar or renewable segment. You see, energy being a politics is now being changing. It's not only the politics which changes all across, but why I believe energy is politics is because I've seen wars uh, between nations just for the energy. Uh, there has been wars in the last two decades and even before that. And also the way the whole energy has changed from a natural resource to a manufacturing or a manufactured equipment. Now, that again is a politics, if you ask me, and has far-reaching implications and consequences on this world. Where in the past, if you are born in a country or you belong to a country which is enriched with fossil fuel under the soil, uh, where you are staying, uh, now we have reached a level in renewables where you can manufacture uh, you know, this renewable energy or equipment which can, which can work as an energy source. Let's also see how the energy mix is changing uh, in the last few years and how it's going to go future. In the current energy mix, uh, electricity is only providing around 19% of the total energy requirement in this world. By 2050, which is not very far off, we are talking about three more decades, this 19% is going to go towards around 50%, 49% as per some uh, very knowledgeable in the field. And out of this 49%, 86% will be renewed. Oh. And again, out of this 86% of renewables, 66% will be solar. <laughs> and the magnitude of this will be by 2050 is we are talking about 8,520 8, gigawatt of solar energy. Let me give you the dimensions that if I have 100 gigawatt of panels in the current technology spread across in any place, then with this 100 gigawatt, I am covering one Switzerland uh, completely, only with the panels. You won't see else anywhere else other than the panels on the top of it. And here we are predicting 8,520 gigawatt of solar energy, which is going to happen. Now, let's not go with the numbers per se. But let's look at the magnitude and what is it bringing on table out here? How the other things are going to change too? Let's look across. India per capita consumption today is not even one tenth of US, one sixth of Europe. But if you look at the projections, by 2050, India is going to consume more power than Europe and US. In fact, by 2038, we are going to overtake Europe, and by 2050, it's going to be beyond US too. When we look at solar, in the last three years, give take few gigawatts here and there, we have added on an annual basis more than 100 gigawatt of solar capacity on a year-to-year -year basis, which is not small. And what has happened and why it has happened, if you ask me, let's look at the price curve. Bhaskar has shown the price curves. But if you see in the last decade, the same panel which was producing power today, it's, the pricing has gone 94% less than what it was a decade back. Fossil fuel power, you know, you keep on hearing crude, Brent and coal costs versus dollar and all that. Nowhere else in the energy segment, you have this sort of advancement in technology which is helping the cost and the prices too. Today's the same panel, and let me share with you. What we used to manufacture three years back, today most of us are manufacturing in half the cost, and the same panel is giving twice that power more or less the same size. That is what technology is providing. That is where technology is driving this power. And the fear is the future. Let's talk about, this is technology. There is a soul. Where is the world going? In the last three weeks, if you ask me, we have seen a very different world. In business, 
in our lifetime. I've never come across more digitization or technology adoption in my life, in my business, and in this country and across the world than what I have come across in so many years. There has been a study which says that in a working space, what was projected to be achieved in 10 years has happened in these three weeks. Now you can call it disruption, you can call it adoption, but at the end of the day, that is the world is, that has yes. happened. So the speed, and again, I'm saying what, whatever I shared with you about 2050 can be achieved in a much shorter time frame because of the way the world has changed. One pandemic has made a huge difference in this adoption of technology and digitization. And what does digitization mean? Now today, what is happening? In the normal circumstances, the three of us would have been sitting chair to chair we would have 300 participants in front of us. There would be just a power required for a, for a particular lighting and some speaker system. That is all that was required in an enclosed area. Now today in this digitization, what is happening? I have a technology, but each one of us are using our own power. It's a distributed power. For the timing it is coming, you may consider it is coming from the same central source, but this power could have been coming from your own sources. So if this is the way the world is going to change, and if this is the way I am going to interact first time with Bhaskar and first time listening to Professor Ostogi, then I need to have more investment in the way I need power. My power consumption is going to go up. The digitization is going to go up. This 25 minutes you know, time span which has happened will not happen in your next seminar, take my word upon that because then you will have backups of it. You have data center which requires a very different thing. Who knows Zoom? Who was aware of Zoom or Microsoft Teams till around two months back and this online classes concept? Now, I'm only giving you examples which are correlated with all the students, but the world has changed, the lifestyle has changed. And I think this digitization which needs power is also going to bring into consideration that distributed power. So where is the life going to change? I think in the industrial and the commercial segment. Now, where is solar coming into it? You may have a grid connected, but solar has the potential to provide you a grid connected power. I am not, I, I am not actually a big fan of X versus Y, fossil versus renewable, wind versus solar. But I believe that today's solar, if you look at the optics of the tariff which solar industry is providing, and these are 25 year flat tariff. It doesn't depend on the, the foreign exchange rate or the cost of coal, imported coal or your own coal. There's no variable cost when we are producing solar power at the grid level. And this cost today, where is it going? It's going to a cent, less than a cent as seen showed out there and in India, somewhere close to two, three cents. What did it reflect that for the next 25 years at this cost of power, you have your own resources to live a life, to have your industrial revolution, to have this commercialization which you need for the growth of the humanity. Let's look at from a residential standpoint. You are also going to have off-grid and on-grid solution. We have some houses today uh, which are in isolation. But today we have a technology available where from the roof you can generate power. In fact, the whole roof is nothing else but solar panels, which allows you to alight as well as power. The load profile of your house or that establishment, which could be a commercial or industrial establishment too, but primarily at a commercial establishment, can actually meet the with the generation as you have the predictability with respect to what power you are going to generate out there. And with this storage, where again we have seen 85% of the cost going down in last one decade, still being higher, but it's going to go dramatically low in time. You can have your own recycled water or you can generate water from the gas which is going to come. So you will have completely isolated or ring-fenced houses from the solar energy for you for the next 12 months or year to year without getting disturbance from the outside. The government doesn't need to spend 
huge amount of money to establish a grid. And as you grow, your power requirements are growing. You can also grow this power. India per se is the total capacity or the potential in this country itself is 749 gigawatt just from India. Today, my consumption in this country is around 170 gigawatt. Look at it. That while we are consuming, and if you look at, if you read Economics Times today, we are very happy that we have reached 138 gigawatt of consumption, which is close to pre-COVID era. This country has the potential of 749 gigawatt per se. You look at the residential segment. Why should I? You, today you know that agriculture is the backbone of this country. Today, I'm subsidizing that power in your earlier session. You have seen that how I'm subsidizing power to a particular segment and increasing the cost of power to another segment. Now, if this whole subsidy can be just a one time capital subsidy, not for next years and years, and you have a technology today where you can generate your own water or pump your water from the ground depending on your need, rather than based on what the free power is coming, and then you try to, to actually take out as much power, as much water as you can. You know, we have done a study in, in a state in this country. All of them need hardly 3 HP motor. Everyone has put 10 HP motor pump out there in that state, only because they are not sure whether the power is going to come for three hours or it's going to come for 10 hours. So you have this factor of safety where even if the power comes for three hours, you are going to flood your fields because you don't know when it will come again. If I take away this fear psychosis away from those farmers where they know they can generate power on their own, utilize for their residence or for the pump set, you don't need, we will not see this water table going so dramatically low in the last few years what we have experienced in the past. So in nutshell, I think, the future is there, technology is there. Let me spend a few minutes on the technology. You know, as, as Bhaskar has glamorized, even today, uh, we have technology and, and we are producing it too. Uh, I won't use the words which he has used, but you have, uh, I would say, the watch straps, which can charge your watch. Uh, they are simple perovskite based technology, movable straps. Uh, which as and when they go to sun, generate power, which is enough for that watch to run for next 25 years. You have these laptop bags, which can charge your laptops whenever you are in a metro or out in parks working out there. All of these products are available. You have EVs here. You know, the whole IC engine on which I grew as a mechanical engineer is now going to be substituted. I think by yes. 2038, uh, the number of EV vehicles are going to outnumber the IC engine vehicles. So we are still around 18, 20 years ahead, you know, behind it. But then again, you need a distributed generation. Like though, you don't need major grid power for all of it. You need power at your convenient place. And you have sun in this country, which you can do, and then you need a storage out there. So I think on a, on a glamorization part, there is so much which is available. I have technology where I can actually print solar cells, even on my jacket, uh, even on anything you feel like you can print it. We, we have technology, some of it we are manufacturing, as a Tata also we are manufacturing outside this country. We are just folding uh, these solar cells and pasting it at any place you feel like. We have buildings here which we have used with the current technology of the modules and uh, that has been used, come to our manufacturing plant, 375 kilowatt is coming only from the facade available at the building. But more importantly, we have a rooftops. More importantly, there is enough power which can be generated out there. We talk of Perosky, we have CIGS. Today, when we look at most of the capacities have gone from multi PV to monopark. I don't want to you know, talk a lot about technologies per se, but all I am saying is the same panel the more and more investment is coming and it is not making it expensive. All these glamorized products are going to be a reality in the next four to five years time. The jury is only out for the time frame. We all know, we all know how the satellites have been working for 
for, for so many years with the same solar powers. That's the only power which they utilize. They have the advantage of no night out there. And hence, the storage capacities are not required for that. But I think a lot is also important that each country has to look at where should they invest it with this, with this power which is available with them. Especially for India too. Should I invest or have in areas where I need it most? Or I create just these rivalries between fossil fuel versus so solar power and have this price tug war which I have seen. I think an important factor for this country and for this future, and this is for all the audiences, that we have to look around whether we would like to be a lead adopter of technology, whether we'd like to remain as a Jugaad country. We have books written on Jugaad, or we try to invest in areas where it matters us most. And there we can leap from. The best part about when your technology is changing so fast that any time you put your investments in, you are not late. You can leapfrog from any other country. You can leapfrog from any other technology. Our roofs, because rooftop has been a specific area which has come out from the audience. Our roofs are very unlike European roofs or any other place in the world. Our villages doesn't have that part of it. Should I load them? First, I support them because I have to put a modules on the top of it. Or I invest in those technologies where I don't need such heavy modules on the top. Our, our requirements are unlike the heating requirements in many other parts of the world. I can be, you know, India has this distinction for centuries to be a country where there is a knowledge of self-sufficiency. Atmanirbhar is very different than ring fencing everything else. It means that we should have technology which is self-innovative and it is enough for me. But then in, when it comes to enough for me, I don't have to first look at someone else's lifestyle, change my lifestyle to that and then become enough for it. I think that is where we need a change on this. We have amazing technology available with us. We are fortunate enough that solar in this country is available in such an abundance. We can have grid power, we can have rooftops, we can have microgrids. Not today when we see in this pandemic, we have also seen a challenge of these migrant labels going from X to Y, X to Z happening. If I have this distributed generation at the villages level and I give power to them, look at the entrepreneurship with this country process, each one of us. Can't we exploit that? And I'm not saying exploiting them per se, exploiting the resources available there in the hinterland with this energy which can come from solar can use by all these so many new entrepreneurs and we can generate revenues at that location itself so that we don't have these migrant labor problems again and again i'm saying india has been fortunate to have this solar power in abundance fortunate that we have a technology today which can solve most of the not only the energy needs but the needs where this energy can be utilized for the real cause required by our society, required by our community, required by the people of this country. And if we invest in them rather than just copying something, that, that's the limited point I have. Thank you very much for this wonderful overview. Dr. Rasagi, you have some questions. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Khanna. It is so nice to hear uh, about uh, hope for the future as well as such a great thing which as far as the solar power is concerned and what can be done and how it will be able to uh, make the economy very competitive. Let me ask you some few questions which may be there in the minds of, the, of our listeners and the first question is about the manufacturing side of it, both monocrystalline as well as multi-crystalline uh, panels. Why is it that we, or, or rather not why, but uh, when do you think that India would be able to produce these panel competitively? Because demand will be there for them because such a huge, not only domestic demand will be there, but demand all over the 
work because um, they are solar power is environmental friendly and not only that it is also uh, uh, people who are socially conscious they 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 are thinking and going as 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 has happened in Europe they are going for it and hence in my opinion in I think that there will be huge demand for these panels and there is opportunity to 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 manufacture them and and uh, what and and what is holding us back that's what I would like to know from you. Well. Um... Professor Astavi, there's nothing which is holding us out. Like we as a company are manufacturing it for the last 30 years. The point is why we have not reached the scale where we should have been. I think that's the point out here. And when you say competitively, I think it's very subjective. You know, we always say that there is a difference between a cost and a price. Are we are we pricing it on a cost plus basis, or we are pricing, or we are facing competition? which where the price is very subjective irrespective of the cost. So there are two, three factors, like let's understand it. As a country, you know, there, the competition comes with a scale. You become competitive and you are investing in technology, especially in this particular way. You are in, investing in, in manufacturing to bring up to a scale, not only for the final product, but all the upstream and downstream items too. It cannot be one panel which can come at the end, right? If you, you require the glass, you require the aluminum extrusions, you require paste, you require cells or cells, you require wafers, you require ingots. Now, where is the competition coming from? The competition is coming from certain subsidies which are provided to them. Now, each business in this country has grown like this. If you look today on the automobile sector, I keep on giving that example. In 1990s, we were in the same place in the automobile industry. At that time, we ring fence ourselves. There were punitive duty structure which was put across. And today, we are in a situation where we are not only providing all the Indian needs, but are even exporting. Exporting it. Yes. Everyone is, is investing. And where is it coming from? Because we have invested in manufacturing. Unlike any other sector, you know, please believe me, manufacturing is not a very transitory base or transaction doesn't happen. You have to look at next 20, 25 years of an offtake. And now when you are, when you are investing in a, in a particular sector where the technology changes after every three years, you are looking for a very different payback. And where is the competition? The competition gets debt which is at least 30 to 40%, if not more cheaper than a manufacturer in India. Power is a very important component while we cost our panel, you know, when you are manufacturing these cells and panels. The power cost there itself is very low. Then the general infrastructure which they have created in the last many, many years has been so good that even those tertiary cost and secondary costs are very low out there. Now, it is not that, that we can't beat. We can always beat them, but you need to ring fence that industry for quite for some time. And you need an offtake guarantee. You just can't be investing in 10 gigawatt, 20 gigawatt, and then you realize that you can't even sell more than 2 gigawatt of capacity in the country Very if, if you make it out there. So I think a sustainable policy, a long term policy support and an offtake guarantee which generally comes from this manufacturing. There is no reason that we would not able not only to, to facilitate or take care of the Indian needs, but even export, uh, even with a premium, it is possible. I think the other factor is that we have to keep on investing into R&D. As a culture, we, we go into more of a jugaad. Uh, or a lead adopter of technologies, like I said, rather than investing in technologies. And again, you need a policy framework which helps in that. Otherwise, one industry can do only this much. Uh, but when we have a collective industry, government support coming on to it, and in few years' time, it will come through. You know, if you look at it in the last four or five years, what has actually propagated solar is the tariff. The optics of tariff 
and the way the business leaders have come forward that in six years we have increased or enhanced the total install capacity in this country six times is also coming from industries and business houses there is no reason that they, most of them all of them and many others will not invest if there are business opportunities on the other side everything is available everything is possible you just need a policy on enablers and I, i think each one of us will able to do a great job it is also important i will tell you why because we are today making a product which is guaranteed for 25 years imports doesn't help you know two out of the top 10 countries uh, companies uh, in our neighborhood goes off the radar screen now what will happen to those warranty certificate which has been given from those companies if you are in india tata power is a 104 year old company yes we are yes. likely to be there for next another century that yes. certificate yes. versus any other certificate <laughs> for performance gives that comfort and i think it is more important is that renewable or solar being an infirm power the quality of the products the warranties which are associated with it is given more importance and even if in the initial period we have to pay slightly more we should be ready to do that all right uh, let me just take you to a, another very topical thing which is slightly different from directly from the uh, solar power just recently uh, some of our listeners must have read or heard about round the clock renewable contracts coming from government and it has been won by uh, one of the companies here and now there may be a doubt in the minds of people that how is it that renewable uh, power can be generated round the clock and, and that I, i i want you to take just a couple of minutes and explain so that people are clear that it is possible and it is very much doable and how does it come yeah surely you see there are two ways now the tenders have come uh, but let me tell you conceptually uh, how the how it is like in the renewable power if you look at the generation curve uh, as we call it and look and then try to map it with the load curve of a particular city or a location let's let's put it across the city you know during the day time we get peak power uh, from solar and then wind is actually complementary in the evenings and early mornings you have virtually the maximum amount of wind power coming into it and by and large that's there the requirement of this country is much lower because we don't need heating at home or industrial establishment so if you look at the country road curve at night time the power requirements are much less uh, so what happen is that and even if you have concurrent wind and solar uh, which is producing it can help with the storage so let's put across that if you have wind and you have solar and then you have a particular amount of storage uh, you can have this round the clock power coming in the time when you have concurrent wind and solar coming this power can be utilized to charge the storage the storage can come from hydros or the storage that peak that storage can also come from uh, battery storage system you can have multiple ways of storing power uh, you have pump storage too which is coming up so there is if you combine them uh, then you can have this 24 by 7 uh, power which can come through i think a lot of people are also today getting confused with the uh, recent of uh, tender which is coming up with the thermal plus wind plus solar but i think that is that is for a specific purpose yeah. but world over you can have it at a grid level you can have it at a residential level at a particular house level too or a community level storage coupled around with wind and solar to give you 24 by 7 uh, all you need to do is to map the generation with the load curves and work on on that area the other factor which again helps us now is the forecasting techniques which has come you know the weather techniques which are coming which allows you to predict on a 15 minute basis uh, what can be your uh, generation from wind what can be your generation from solar and then if you can map your 
requirements based on that. Uh, and then you can also minimize storage. All I'm saying is that in the current era, the storage cost is much higher. And hence to optimize that cost, you use all these algorithms, but in the times to come when the storage cost will also come low, uh, you have this solution. And I think that is the future. It's going to come in this coming decade for sure. Thank you. And I uh, just, since you have touched on the storage, could I just request you to tell us, tell something about what are the breakthrough technologies coming in the battery storage, uh, which our listeners would be interested in knowing? There are many. I think you see, actually what happened is that storage, when we look at in a common spectrum, we only talk about the small storage of lithium cadmium batteries, which we, lithium ion batteries, which we come across. But I think when we talk of storage from a power industry, we look at storage at a grid level. We look at storage at a commercial industrial level, at an off-grid level. We also look at storage at a residential level. I think there are a few technologies which are coming out on NAS and other, which are helping us more at a grid level. You know, grid stability is a very important phenomenon. We are not talking much about it, but because today our renewable power in the grid is hardly 10 to 12 percent of the total power which we utilize per se. But by nature, a renewable is an infirm power. All of a sudden, it can go off. We have, you know, this solar eclipse uh, has given us certain heartbreaks in this manner because how the grid comes across on the up and down, which, which was a major area of concern for us. The typhoons has also given us one area where we realize that all of a sudden you have a surge in the wind power. Now these are giving us, I would say, a sample on how do we look at the grid. And the grid storage is more critical today because the way we are embracing solar at a grid level or a wind at a grid level, that has become a very important factor. We are not having much of a hydropower with us. And we are also not having cross-country grids. You know, in Europe, when you have this renewable power, like one day the whole of UK was on a renewable power, Germany many days has been on a renewable power. They have this advantage of a cross-country grid. And you have a lot of hydros available, which can give you power at a very, very quickly, you know. To ramp up a thermal power plant, you virtually need hours and hours and days. Where to ramping up? In this part of phenomena, you need a hydropower. I think in the times to come, lithium ion is will be the game changer uh, at a small scale, and at a bigger scale. Again, the fact remains on what does our country needs. Uh, I also feel that this lead acid has its own advantages, uh, but I think uh, my sense is lithium ion primarily from NAS, from cadmium are the technologies which are going to be there. Uh, but the main challenge is not technology, if you ask me. Uh, it is the cost uh, yes. and the projections, how it comes. Now, since you have talked about- Can, cost, I, can, I, can I take a few more questions? Because we are running out of time. Okay, last question. Since you have okay. talked about the cost, uh, what do you think is going to happen to standard investment in last 10 years? Because, you know, Mr. Bhaskar showed you that how the cost has gone down. So the people who invested in the technology about five years, six years back at that cost, what, how are they going to recover that cost? Who will, be, who will pay or who will bear that cost now? Ah, it's your opinion. Professor, I think, you know, you have to look at it that most of the investments which were made were tied up, you know, power is generally tied up here. And what I think Mr. Bhaskar has also shown across is the cost of power which has come down. Power in this country is generally tied up for 25 years as a power purchase. Okay. And that per unit cost of power which was tied up has taken into consideration the cost of capital at that exactly. particular uh, So it is going low. So they are not stranded assets. Stranded assets come when the technology shifts. Stranded assets will happen that after 25 years when these assets will will not have a power purchase agreement, then it will become a stranded asset. I think companies like us and many others are also now started investing in what do you do with those panels? There is enough material 
which is available and very expensive material like silver and many other which is possible to be extracted from those earlier technologies which can recover a lot of those costs uh, so i think that it is a misnomer that they are with technology they are going to be stranded they are going to produce power and as per that agreement they will be paid as per that so we won't see any stranded assets as we have experienced in thermal i think there is a apprehension of what has happened in thermal will happen here and now but you don't have a variable cost here yes okay. can, can i take a few questions here because uh, we are actually running out of time and uh, uh, there are lots of questions that have already come in from the audience the first question is with the crisis taking place in the world especially between india and china will supplies get affected uh the point is will supplies will get affected uh, is difficult to say but okay. i think what we are hearing is that on a long term horizon uh, the government is looking forward for made in india and more and more of uh products made in india and it is not only for panels uh, but even cells and you know it's not only the modules we glamorize panels uh, we glamorize modules there are inverters and there are many other products which are coming across from the country i think in a short term it is possible uh, but generally you take around 18 months to build a project or 12 months to build a project so it would be a short term phenomena uh, but on a long term with this policy initiative which we are hearing uh which are likely to come i feel india will be a atmanirbhar very soon excellent the other question which of course is a very uh general question is what if we capture all the energy of the sun and here i can just mention one thing for the audience uh in 2000 uh, 2010 there's a project called desertech which of course ashish should be very familiar with and that time that said if all the energy of the sun could be captured in 6 hours you could light up the whole world for the next one year just six hours of energy but that was pre led days that was pre current technology days what's your estimate now no i think i have no estimates now if you ask me i am looking for a day uh, which i hope and happen may not happen in my generation maybe after one or two generations where i don't need anything on earth i don't need to cover this earth we will have some receptor and there is a technology available it's only the transmission which is very expensive where i have will i will capture i will capture sunlight outside um, you know from our uh, world and uh, like a satellite we will transmit it to in, to the countries or to the houses uh, directly from there there is no night there is no day there is no loss of radiation because of it atmosphere that is where i think the world is moving that is the most uh, you know mr baskar will again say that is glamour but that's not glamour it's a glamour it's reality <laughs> <laughs> it's a reality which i for i i think that technology is there it, yes let's understand that whatever we are seeing today were and is available it is only the cost which is exorbitant and the moment we have this cost barrier broken up when i have you no know, even today i have i don't need transmission lines to transmit power that that has come uh, maybe at a expensive state that has come not tomorrow when i have this cost effective technology and i can capture sunlight up in air uh, without any losses uh, because of our uh, atmosphere and then just beam it down that's the best thing that is going to happen in one or two generation for sure Okay, two more questions, and then we are uh, my questions get over. One, what are the major risks for the solar industry? May I suggest uh, po two, two possible answers? One, government's ability to honor contracts in solar investment rate in the past at a certain price, and the government wants to change the contracts today. Now that is one risk I perceive. Your view on risks? Now I think we, you know, let let me put it across out there. I think again we have glamorized solar and there's too much of optics out there. I think there is okay. a technology, there is a business, there is a need. I don't think so. Anything will go wrong. I think we ourselves will do something dramatically wrong out there. There could be some of us who are, as I call them, fidians who will come blow ourselves and we create a very different negative environment for it. I think today, as I see, if we co-align with the fossil fuel, which is 
for our base load, which is also required. We have a technology where we can actually encourage rooftops, have distributed generation, microgrids, give this power to where it matters and you know help the society per se. Nothing can go wrong. I think we are we have lost that point. While the government, while there are some uh, facts about PPAs being renegotiated and all that will come up, but I have immense faith that the agreements will be honored. It's a mature deal. The agreements will be honored. One of one of experiences. Uh, I think the judicial system in this country will take care of it. Brilliant. Uh, and on a long term, I keep on saying it is not a hundred meter dash. We are here for decades and decades. Uh, this technology, this industry, this source of power is the future. And for this country, it's a new IT. We are going to blossom and be number one like the IT industry. One last question, and that's about rooftop solar, sir. Uh, for the benefit of the audience, when in Tripura, the government, for a variety of reasons, gave rooftop solar to 50,000 houses, they discovered three things. One, the cost of installation was 50,000 per connection as against 2 lakhs to 5 lakhs per connection for grid power. Two, there were no breakdowns, there were no power cuts. The audience, the, the customers are thrilled. Three, there was no subsidy year after year after year. In spite of the successful experiment in Tripura, why hasn't rooftop solar succeeded? And why is the government still pushing for large solar farms, which are not neither employment generated, nor the use of maximum strategic advantage that India has? I have, I agree and I disagree on the last point. Because okay. <laughs> even the big solar power generate employment and are required for this country. We are using the barren land to generate power and it generates employability. If we are utilizing our own cells and modules, you have even more employment coming from it. Okay. Having said that, coming back to the point of rooftop, I think you have to look at a win-win solution for it. You know, currently, uh, where is the maximum revenue coming? It's, it's coming from industrial segment, it is coming from commercial segment. And that is where you have the maximum cost of power. Now when, and the residential, which is being to large extent subsidized. If you take away these constituency from the distribution company, what are they left with? They are left, otherwise also they are not in the great shape, right? You take away their best part, the revenue generation part, they are not going to like it. Unless I have a win-win solution for both the installer, the developer, as well as the distribution company, you will not be able to succeed in it. So we first, but the rural sector to, to solar, rooftop solar. It is, it is an amazing success. Take my word. Very we have seen the smiles on the farmer. We have seen the smile on the distribution companies too. One I have no reason to disbelieve that the rooftop can be the same, but you have to bring that sort of solution where for a distribution company, it is as good as a business as for that consumer and the service provider. I think that is what we need. So brilliant. Thank you very much for that perspective. For me, the questions are over and I know that we're running out of time. And I know that you have appointments which we delayed. Uh, Rastogi ji, your job to give the vote of thanks. Thank you very much. And, uh... All of you will agree that it was an excellent presentation by Mr. Khanna. And Amazing. We are becoming, uh, we are enlightened with what is going to happen in the, so, in the solar power sector, mm -hmm. not only on the rooftop side, uh, solar power, which has been very helpful to, especially to our rural uh, uh, folks and also to many uh, folks in the urban areas. And it is going to be uh, future and uh, that right hope for the future. Let me thank you all for joining us. And with that, I also thank you, um, Mr. Khanna, as well as Ms., uh, Mr. Paska, bringing to bring such a such a uh, topic to all of you today. Thank you. And most important, the audience which bore with us for all the problems that you faced in networking. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Really a pleasure. Thank you, thank you Dr. Rastogi. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.